25 companies that are interested in Huntington's disease is just tremendous. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I love the fact that the back of the HDSA Team Hope's walk shirts used to be just one sponsor, and now you can't even fit them all on, on one t-shirt. Um, so they're interested, they're involved, and I think we can do the same for them. So I think that's, that's all I, I had. Um, and this was um, from our family trip, we went to Iceland, which is one of the leaders of genetics, actually, in, in understanding of genetics. Uh, so this is in Reykjavik. Uh, this is one of their um, street blocks. They have old bikes that are up and, and painted. So, um, so for vacation, you took your kids to Iceland to study genetics? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. I killed some birds with one song. <laughs> So I, I really, I mean, there, I wish there was a lot more data to talk about. Um, I think that what we do have is a lot of hope and promise, and um, that there are certainly some exciting approaches that, that are in development. Yeah. Well, not the study, the, um, the European study where they had that trial. Did they actually say that they s saw a di a, like lowering of the CAG so that, and no, no, sorry. So CAG is just one part of the gene, okay. right? And so this was not going in and altering the CAG repeat. Okay. This was not going in and altering DNA. So going back to the beginning, DNA is a blueprint, really for RNA takes the blueprint and turns it into a protein. Yeah. Okay, so they didn't change up here. Okay. What we saw was less of this because we interfered here. So in this pathway of Huntington's disease, they didn't cut out the gene, they didn't reduce expression of the DNA, um, and they didn't kind of destroy the mutant Huntington by any way, binding it or um, having it cleared out of the body faster. They reduced the production of it through RNA. That's the thought. That's the ASO, the antisense oligonucleotide therapy. Okay. In, in these type of studies, if you want to get involved in one, do you have to be gene positive? Generally speaking, yes. Okay. Um, and some of them are getting more specific too, saying that you have to be late prodromal or early symptomatic. Um, and at least in the WAVE study, where was it? You can't even just have an expanded CAG. You have to have one of these two other mutations okay. so that they can use GPS to get at the, the CAG mutation. Regarding the SNP one, SNP two, so if you don't have those, there's other there's other options that are out there. That's just the wave. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So this is just wave's approach. Okay. So this is their idea that let's see if we can find a GPS to target just the mutant Huntington and 70% of people that have the CAG mutation as part of the entire gene have one of these two, but 30% don't, and um, there may be others, um, and so, uh, and this may not be the best approach, we don't know yet, but there are other approaches that are in development. Yeah. So when you take the test to determine if you have the HD, um, whatever you have, yep. um, the, does that, with the results, identify those two automatically? No. no, it doesn't. This is specifically for WAVE. Okay, so people here or they're going to say have you have you know 44 repeats here so we're looking at this section of the gene commercially this is what we have we're not looking out here yet this is what wave is still working on in terms of how to best identify these single mm -hmm. nucleotide polymorphisms as a gps for that so this is not commercially available it's not even refined to the point of more widespread use for the wave studies either so uh, of the 46 participants on that clinical trial. Okay, so, so oh, this is right. WAVE, this is WAVE's right. approach, right? This is IONIS, different company, different approach. Oh, so, oh, this is the one that had the, the, the clinical human trial. Correct. Oh, I see. Right, so, so. Those people here didn't even get that. These people only got their CAG repeat mm -hmm. number. They did not get the, the SNPs that WAVE is using as GPS to find the expanded CAG repeat. 
because it's a different company, it's a different approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now you were saying that the, um, you know, the first drug that you mentioned, um, now is, is, you know, since my CAG wouldn't actually, you know, be, I, you know, in the, in that bracket, I guess, because I guess I have like a higher allele number, um, but would um, would I still be able to qualify for the drug once it came out to the public, or is that just in terms of the one that you need that trials? other SNP abnormality? Are you talking about the wave one, or are you talking about this one? The wave one, yeah. So the wave, the wave one is not. It, it's it's still obviously they're all in development, but if it becomes available on the market, you would have to have one of these two. Oh, still okay. In order, yeah. so the idea is that you can lower the mutant Huntington and they're gonna target just mutant Huntington and leave the wild type or the normal one so it can do it can still perform its function and produce the normal protein. Because we know that if you get rid of all Huntington, that's really bad for us. We don't want to get rid of all of it. You can't get rid of all of it. So when you have a knockout model in mice, meaning that you get rid of the gene completely, it's lethal. Those mice die. They they don't develop at all. And this is also a gene that's not just in humans. It's in many different species. I mean, down to like the littlest worm. It's really an important protein. 